Hi everyone, I'm just going to be talking to you today about the Stratus Trail Stove. It's a cheap uh, hobo type stove which you can buy off the internet. It's uh, made by a company called Stratus and um, what it basically is is an aluminum sheet which has been cut and bent to form a chimney and it's a very efficient trail stove. Uh, you can use it anywhere and the beauty of it is that it doesn't require any fuel to be brought along with you because it burns wood. Um, of course the only limitations of it are is that you actually need a source of wood to use it but uh, if you are going to be hiking or camping in an area which is which has a lot of wood it's a perfect stove to use so I'm just going to basically uh, guide you through how to use it how to start it and uh, what conditions it's best for in order to get the trail stove started you're going to need uh, to whittle down some wood or to find some small sticks what I've done over here is I've whittled down a piece of wood using an exacto knife uh, you can use any pocket knife to do it and you basically make this fine material which is very flammable. You can use wool, uh, cotton with gel in it, anything like that which is flammable. And what you want to do is you want to build up a little pile and then you're going to put the stove on top of this and you're going to uh, put some material in the stove and light it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the trail stove itself and I'm going to put it right on top of that and then I'm going to start to fill it with wood. What you want to do is I find that the stove works best when this opening over here is either facing directly into the wind or away from the wind. Depending on the conditions, you have to figure out what, what works for you. But uh, either way, you want to have this either facing into the wind or away from the wind, and the stove will work most efficiently. Um, tonight, there's no wind, so you can put it in any position that you want. To help the stove start burning, you might also want to put some of this material inside the stove itself. And then you want to use relatively small pieces of wood things along this size. So uh, twigs, branches, things like that which are uh, you know about a centimeter or less in diameter. Uh, you can use some bigger pieces to get it started and try to get all your wood facing down. If it's laying on a side it won't catch as well because you have to get an updraft going. You want to evacuate all the smoke and debris out the top of the stove. So just put your pieces in like that. Um, you, what you want to do is you really want to get it about half full. Any more than that and it won't really catch because you're gonna have a problem uh, getting the air to circulate upwards. When using a stove like this, it's best to use either matches or a lighter with a longer nozzle. That way you can get it right into the base over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some regular matches. I'm going to strike one and I'm just going to start the kindling underneath going. And after that we should have a roaring blaze in a couple minutes. Or possibly even less, maybe a half a minute or so. So the fire's definitely started, the material underneath started to burn and some smoke is starting to come up out of the stove. Um, what Stratus has also done is they've provided a blow tube which the stove comes with. Now a lot of people think you have to blow into this continuously, sort of the same way uh, the Zip stove uh, has a fan in it that keeps the fire going. In fact you don't, you only have to use this um, in the early stages to get the stove going and after that it's okay and it's just a couple puffs not too many in fact I don't even use this at all with dry wood I've only had to use it with wet or moist wood and that was only on a few occasions the stove should start fine normally we can see the fire burning in the base of the stove and what's happening is the flames are starting to go up into the middle of the stove and they'll eventually catch the wood inside And as you can see I don't have to blow into the stove or anything it's actually starting all on its own if you wanted to get it going faster you could blow into it but like I said you only need to do that if the woods really wet or damp otherwise it should start without a problem once the stove gets going it'll pretty much keep going on its own until you stop putting wood in or uh, you dump everything out as you can see it's burning very efficiently at about this point in time what we're gonna want to do is put some more wood into it to keep the fire going now the stove's burning very efficiently, so this is when you can start putting in more wood if you need to. You can use pretty much any pieces. You can use any pieces of wood that are uh, up to three centimeters in diameter. Sometimes even bigger pieces work just fine. You just want to throw them in through the side, or you can even throw them in through the top. Just try and get them vertical. And if anything is poking out the side, because you don't want flames blowing in your face, just sort of push it away. The stove is actually very good in the winter time because the flame is supported on an iron base above the ground so it actually provides a lot of heat in a very small space so if you're uh, if you build your own snow cave or something like that 
This is actually very, very efficient. It'll keep you very warm. Uh, the embers and hot coals inside of the stove are probably the most important part. They supply enough heat to cook food with the flame, and even after the flame is dissipating, you just have them sitting in the bottom of the stove. They're very hot, and you only have to put in a piece of wood every now and then, every uh, couple of minutes or so, at this rate, to keep them going. And this will last you all night, providing tons of heat. Now, just to show you how quickly wood will burn in this stove, I'm just going to drop in a bit of wood right now, and you're going to see it burst into flames very quickly. And this is with hot embers only. There is no other flame inside. You can see it's starting to smoke. And in a few seconds or so, it should actually start flaming. If it doesn't, then you can either blow into the stove uh, through, the, through the tube itself or just openly above it. It seems like I put in a bit too much wood, so I'm just going to go give it a couple blows and the stove seems to be taking a little longer to start, so we can actually use our blow hose now. You can see with a couple good puffs of air, our fire started again, it's roaring and uh, should be no problem to cook with. Now the only real issue which emerges with the stove itself is that you have to make sure you use it in an area where you're allowed to burn wood and collect wood. Um, and you have to make sure there's not a fire ban in effect. So now that we've got our fire burning, if we want to boil some water, make some scrambled eggs, once your fire is going you can just place your pot over the top of the fire and all the flames and smoke should exhaust themselves through this big hole here. Now this is a crucial time, you want to keep the fire going. So if you see it dying out, be sure to put in smaller pieces of wood and to just give a puff of air or two through the blowhole and everything should be fine. Under normal conditions, uh, you should be able to bring water to a rolling boil in anywhere from about 7 to 10 minutes. Uh, it all depends on the type of wood and the amount of heat generated, but typically that is the boil time. The only thing to really remember with this stove is that because it uses wood, it will make your cooking wear sooty, and there are some carcinogenic effects associated with smoke. So just be aware of that. That's why some people do choose liquid and gas fuels over uh, wood burning. But if you bring a bag along, you can just stick the stove in a bag and you can uh, wash your cooking ware and stick it in a bag as well. Uh, there should be no issues. So I just added some more wood into the fire and you can see it's roaring. It's just blasting out of there and uh, it's been about four minutes so the water should be boiling in about another uh, four minutes or so I figure. Possibly less with the amount of heat that the fire is generating now. And it's about four minutes later, and the water's come to a nice rolling boil. And that's the beauty of this stove. It's very easy to use. The fuel is free, and it burns very effectively in any type of weather. And of course, the last thing I should tell you about is that when you're using the right kind of wood, the trail stove produces very little, if any, smoke. It should burn cleanly, and that means it's burning very, very hot.